Welcome, my dear students of class 12. This is tele and radio tutoring with your tutor, Atsinyo Sekose, and this tutoring is coming from the Directorate of School Education, Nagaland. So today's topic is on informal letter. Now, I'm sure this is a very familiar topic for you, but uh, we will be learning a few more things about formal letters in this class. I'm sure you have come across formal letters in class 8, perhaps, and 9, 10, 11, and so on. But in today's class, in fact, in our course, you will find that this formal letter is leaning more towards on how to write applications and especially for applying for jobs. So along that line, we would be taking, taking a look at the formal letters here. So you would have to turn to page 12, and as you can see, in your, this is in your from your main course textbook, that is MCB, and you will find that uh, these are very important writing. It falls under the writing skills, and it is very important. Why? Because you would be required to use these writing skills even after you have finished your uh, class 12, and later on in future, you would be very soon you would be likely to be looking up for a job and applying for a job. So this would come in very handy later on. So if you have not learned it properly in lower classes, make sure today you learned it clearly so that you would use it later on in future. In fact, when it comes to uh, formal letter writings and having it in our uh, writing section, these are to do with skills. And I'm sure I've mentioned it earlier in one of our previous class, but skills here is referring to abilities. And these abilities are lifelong. You would be needing it, whether you become an engineer, a doctor, whether you become a waiter or a waitress for that matter, it, you still need to write certain things. So it comes in handy. So make sure that you learn it and um, try to follow this lecture by looking into your text as well and mark the necessary things as we discuss this topic. So now, we are first going to take a look at the style of formal letters. So you need to write down these points. Formal letter style. What do we mean when we say style? By style, what kind of language should we use in formal letters? I'm sure sometimes you get lost as to how to go about with writing these uh, letters. So the language, the number one here is language should be simple and clear. Language should be simple and clear. Point number two, make sure you avoid adding unnecessary details. So avoid avoid unnecessary details. The third point is avoid Abbreviated words. Avoid abbreviated words, or for that matter, slang words. Make sure you do not use that kind of words. Now, uh, when we say unnecessary details here, you know, when you are writing an application, nobody wants to go through the whole thing. If it is too lengthy, nobody would be interested. So only the necessary information, the details, should be put into your letter. So that's. Point number two and point number three is avoid unnecessary, uh, sorry, avoid abbreviated words, which means here you write only the necessary details. So this is how your style of formal letter writing should go about. When I say language should be simple and clear, make sure you avoid elaborated words and uh, make sure, no need to use those kind of words actually. Make it short and precise. That's the next point. Short and precise. 
So these are some of the things that you need to remember when you draft an application. So now the next point, we will be referring to your text as well, so you may look down into your textbook and we will be discussing about format here. So when we say format, we can also say it's the structure, how the, the writing should go about, all right? Now, uh, if you look down into your page 12, there is a sample there and you can also follow that or you can also turn to page 13 where some brief explanations are given. So here in this format, you would always start with sender's name and followed by sender's address. Then the next thing you have is the city, hold on, the city and pin code. So that's how your first section of the format should go about sender's address, sender's name, your name and sender's address city pin code. In the exam, if you are to write it, make sure you, can, uh, you write it with a fictitious name. No need to give your real name. But in reality, if you pr have to practically write a, an application, of course, in that case, it requires your real name. So that's how you should go about. Then after that, you leave a few, one line. One line, you leave one line here and then you write the date. Now, many people uh, have different kinds of ways to write the date. So in our case here, let's say 1st of May, supposing it is 2, 2020, let's say. You can either write it in this way, but let me tell you, many people prefer to see the month clearly. So supposing it is 2nd of May, 2nd of May, then you put a comma and then you write 2020. So you need to write this clearly in this way. So you can write the date in that manner. Then, as you can see in your text, this is followed by name of the recipient. What do we mean by name of the recipient here? Name of the recipient. In other words, recipient here is referring to the person whom you are writing. So, the receiver. The receiver of your application. Receiver of your application followed by, followed by the title or designation. What do we mean by title or designation here? The post that the person is holding. Supposing it is a manager, you can write uh, the name of the receiver or the recipient, the manager, and so on. Or if it is your school principal, the principal, and so on. So that is the designation. Then followed by the address. Here in this, in this address, we mean the place, the place of that institute, organization, company, and so on. Then followed by pin code, followed by, hold on, address, followed by city, and pin code. So that's how it should go about with the second section that is name of the receiver, title, designation, address, city and pin code. Now after that comes the salutation. So in your lower classes I'm sure you have learned what we mean by salutation. So salutation, the simplest way to start your salutation is you can start with dear sir or madam, whatever the case may be. If it is a sir, you start with sir. If it is a madam, you start with dear sir or madam. So to make it more precise, let me put it in this way. Let's say dear madam. Then you put a comma here. After that, your opening 
uh, opening paragraph, all right? So your introduction, let's see. So in your introduction, make sure that you write it in one paragraph, make sure you write the purpose. So I need you to write this down, purpose. In your introduction, you need to write the purpose. Um, these days, with uh, the way things are going very, f with the way things are going very fast, nobody likes elaborated words such as uh, respect and honor and so on. You have to come to the point quickly. So here, in the purpose, you can just supposing you are uh, applying for a job, let's say, responding to an advertisement, let's say, then directly you can say, uh, I wish to offer my candidature and so on, or the, uh, in response to the advertisement number such and such, you can start off in that way. Very uh, directly, you can start your introduction in that way. Then the next thing that you have to remember, after that, leave again one line and then start with the specific details about you. Maybe the people, those who put up the advertisement are interested in your age, uh, you would know from reading the advertisement or let's say your question. So according to the question and according to the advertisement, you need to put only the most important uh, details here. So let's say your age, a few things about you, your age, let's say you're, you are 21 years, so I am a 21 years old, uh, a graduate of from that such and such college and I have worked as such and such and I wish to apply for this job and so on. So you can put it in that way in one specific paragraph and then you give the closure. So in the closure, you can also mention the references. So references, what do we mean by references here? References here are uh, those documents that you need to attach, all right? Or references here is also your resume and your curriculum vitae or bio data, whatever the case may be. We would be discussing about that later on very soon. So your references, all right? And then you can also express a few things in simple, one single sentence, you can express your earnestness or your interest in applying for the job. So that will do. We do not need thanking you in anticipation, all those things we do not need nowadays. Those are uh, done away with. So with that, you give the ending or signing off. You can say um, here, sender's name, which means your name here again, and you give your name, so that's about it. But uh, you would find that in your text there, in the example, you have your sincerely, just before your name, your sincerely, and on the other hand, on the other example there, explanation there, you have sincerely. So this is what I want to clarify. Now, um, you may have also uh, used yours faithfully, yours faithfully, but nowadays we are also doing away with that, all right? But if you, if you are interested, if you're an old school, let me say, if you are going to use yours faithfully before your name, uh, if we use that only when we know the person's name, all right, to whom you are sending, the recipient's name. We use yours faithfully when we know the name of the recipient. But if we do not know, we use yours sincerely. In some case, just sincerely will do. So, the, you know, language is always evolving and we are living in a very fast-paced world. People want only the, the most necessary details, so we are doing away with a lot of things here. So you can keep that in mind, yours sincerely or sincerely. So that, you can put it in that manner and then your name, so that's about it. Then you would find, after that, you would find another word that is, I'll write it on top. After you have given the sender's name, the last thing that you will find is enclosure. So in the enclosure, what do we mean by enclosure here? I'm sure the people who had advertised the, uh, the job or if you are applying for, re responding to an advertisement or applying for a job, then what happened is that they would be required to get certain, they would be interested to get certain documents for uh, clarification. So those documents, all right, 
those documents should be enclosed. Or for that matter, I've also mentioned about resume or curriculum vitae. So in the enclosure, how many documents they required, you would put it in the, you would mention it, in fact, in the enclosure. Because it's not possible for you to, or for anyone to have all those documents that you have accumulated all these years and put it into a bundle and submit it. You cannot do that. So you need only the specific things. So what you can do is in the enclosure, you can start off with one. So let's say you have enclosed your resume or curriculum vitae, CV or biodata, like I said, whatever the case may be. Hold on. So let's say you have enclosed it, and then let's say you have enclosed your documents, all right? Let's say your metric admit card documents, whatever the case may be again here. So point it out in that way. It should go in this sequence. First, your resume, your documents, any other documents that is required, maybe even your, uh, you know, a passport-sized photo, so two passport-sized photo, whatever the case may be, again. So that's how you should write your application. So when we, you draft it in this manner, only the most specific informations are put there in the application. Avoid, this is why we say avoid unnecessary, uh, unnecessary words or avoid unnecessary elaborative words. So that's how you can write your formal letter. Now, as you can see in your text, there is a box. You will see that uh, there is a box, but this box is only to draw your attention to that format, all right? It is not necessary for you to draw the box in the exam or in real life situation. When you write an application, you don't draw a box. So let me put that across clearly in that way. Now, you may have also noticed that our, in the format, everything starts from the left-hand side. Everything starts from the left-hand side. You have to remember that. So uh, after the sender's name, sender's address, and so on, there is a space, date, space, recipient's name, and so on, space. So it has a breakup. You have to uh, maintain this breakup. All right, and make sure you write it in paragraph. When it comes to the body section, write it in paragraph. One point in one paragraph. So that's how it sh you should have write your um, applications or your formal letter. Now, some of you might be confused in the, uh, when you actually get to draft it in a paper, where do I start? Do I start here on the extreme edge of the paper? We get confused, so you can at least leave a few space here and then start in a straight line. And no need to worry about, should I put the sender's name here and then leave a space, a few space here and then start here, dear, such and such. No need to worry about that, all right? Everything is on the, should be on the left-hand side. So that's the format of our formal letters. Now, we would move on to how to write your resume or your curriculum vitae. So what is a resume or your curriculum vitae? Resume or curriculum vitae here is referring to those specific informations regarding your educational qualifications, regarding your professional qualifications, and so on. So that is what we are talking about when we say resume. And remember, in our formal letters, we need to attach or enclose our resume because that gives the people to get to understand, gather the main information. So how do we draft a resume and why is it important? Because you see, like I said, very soon you would have finished your class 12 and very soon you might be looking for a job and you would be required to draft one. So it is very important for you to learn how to draft one. And for some of you, many people might look up at you saying that, oh, you are a matriculate person now, you, are, you have passed class 12, please write this letter for me, I need to apply for this job. And when that time comes and if you do not know how to write, your education would, serve, would have served no purpose. So do not just learn it in order to score marks, but learn it so that you would be able to use it later on in future. So your resume, let's take a look at the format. You would find it on page page 14, page 14. 
So you have a sample there, clearly given there. And uh, let me first tell you that there is no hard and fast rule when you draft a resume, except that you should follow a certain sequence, all right? So first, I would suggest we, in our sample there, it straight away start with name. So if you are going to follow that structure or format, name you can mark it as one, two, father's name, mother's name, and so on. Father's name, mother's name, and so on. But I would suggest, in order to make it more clear, you start with point number one here, personal data. Personal data. So mark it as point number one, and after that, you can maybe use Roman letters or A, B, C, whatever the case may be. After that, you can write your name here. So put your name there. Then the second point, you can give your parent's name. Parent's name, you can just simply put it in that way or you can break it up again into, like I said, father's name or mother's name and so on. In some case, uh, depending on the job requirement and depending on the advertisement, you would also be required to mention marital status. So you can also write marital status. So whether you are married or not married, you need to mention that. And in some case here, whether your gender would also come here, whether you are male, female, others, whatever the case may be. So uh, your personal data should fall under these categories. These specific information should fall under personal data. Now we would move on to the next point, that is the educational qualification. So that would be our second point. So educational qualification. Under this, the, this one should come first after your personal data. So educational qualification here, uh, you have to make a column or make rows and column. So let's say, you have made rows and columns in this way. And as your text suggests, you can make as many as possible, depending on the kind of information that is required. So here, you can start off with the certificate or your degree. And remember, in the educational qualification, the latest certificate or degree. The most recent uh, degree should be the first one. So let's say you are a graduate. Let's just put it in that way for now. Let's say you are a graduate under the column of certificate and degree. In your text, again, you would find institution there. But uh, I would suggest you go with year first. So in the second column, you have year. Why? Because people are interested in uh, finding out which year you graduate more than the institution. So let's say you graduated in 2020, then you can say, in our case, we can have, remember, we can have as many rows and columns, so you can say here, university or board. All right, now let's say you have graduated from Nagaland University, so you can put Nagaland University there, and if you wish, you can write the full uh, word here, all right? Then comes the institution. Let's say you graduated from uh, Cotton College, which is affiliated to Nagaland University, let's say. So in that way, it should go about. And in fact, if you wish, you can also add the percentage and grade and so on. So your percentage, in fact, if you wish, this can also come here because that is also, if you feel that that is more important. Now, let's say here percentage or grade. So um, for some of you, you may be getting percentage. For some of us, uh, different kinds of evaluations are being used. So in your certificate, you may be getting only grade. So depending on that, you can draft it in this manner. So let's say your percentage is 70% or whatever the case may be again. 
Or if you want, you can also separate this in different columns. And for now, let's say this is a grade A. So you put it in that way. Then followed by the next qualification. So after, bef uh, before graduation, I'm sure that would come HSSLC. So your HSSLC information should be here. Let's say it is in 2018. And this HSSLC will fall under which board? Naglen Board of School Education. So it would be NBSE or CBSE, whatever the case may be here. Then Institute, let's say it's Riverdale, whatever the case may be again, Riverdale High School. Then your percentage, let's say 90% grade A and so on. So that's how it should go about. Then comes the HSLC. So let's say it is in 2015. Let's say this is CBSE. Let's say um, let's say Elderville School, whatever the case may be here, and so on. So this is how you should be drafting your educational qualification here. The main thing that you need to remember is start with the latest certificate. Maybe very soon you may also go for higher studies and maybe it is a master degree so you, you start with master degree because that uh, that is the highest qualification or maybe doctorate so you start with doctorate degree and so on so in your educational qualification this is the format that that you should be following remember there is no hard and fast rule here but uh, if you feel that this percentage is more important you can bring it up over here and so on Now, the next point in our resume, that is the third point, is your professional qualification. What do we mean by professional qualification? Many of us are still very confused with professional qualification and experience. So let me distinguish that. When we say professional qualification, which means after a certain point of studies, you go and get trained. All right. So when you are trained, you are a profession. Uh, you, you, uh, when you get trained, you are following that profession. So that's why we say teacher, uh, teaching job is a profession. That's why we say doctor is a profession and so on. So that is professional qualification, when you get trained. So in the same way, you can also start off with, again, drafting another rows and columns. Now, let me point out that these, in this structure, you would find that there, I'm going to repeat again, there is no hard and fast rule, all right? So you, but the thing is, you have to start with the first, you have to start with the first most recent uh, qualification or professional qualification. So let's say here the organization, you have there, uh, you have it there in your textbook. So organization, company, institute, whatever the case may be here. And uh, so here, what you can write is, let's say you are a B ed trained and duration, let's say it took you three years and here responsibilities, you have all those things in that row. But in this case, since you are getting trained, you can just leave a space there. And a reason for leaving, again, just space there. In fact, no need to give all these things also if depending on the question or depending on the job requirement, all right? Or for that matter, what you can do is you can also say, um, let's say you have got a short, uh, let's say you got a diploma course in computer. So that can also come here. Diploma course, then duration, you mentioned it in that way. So this is how you should be going about with your professional qualifications. Do not get it confused with other experiences, all right? When you have a certain certificate, when you undergo a training, that should fall under this. Or if you have been working, what happened is, let's say that you have been working as a teacher, and let's say uh, here, okay, 
Let's say you work organization, company, or institute. Let's say you work in a mental institute, whatever the case may be, and let's say you work there for four years, then reason, uh, responsibilities, caretaker, let's say, then responsibilities, you take care of all people and so on. You can mention it very, in a very short way. So you can put it in that way, all right? Or if you have uh, undergone a training in videography or photography, you know, you can also mention that. For how many years or months you have taken, you can mention it in that duration section and so on. So this is how the flow of your professional qualification should be sequenced in this manner. Now coming to the next point, Um, in your question, in your text, you may not find this, but you can also add experience. Because this is very important. In big companies, people are more interested in looking at your experience because it reflects your, uh, it reflects your skills. And that's why it is also very important for you to add your experience. So you can point it out in this way. Depending on the question and depending on the the job requirement, give your experiences, all right? Supposing you have an internship experience at a hotel, you mentioned that. Uh, you, supposing, you have, uh, supposing you have gone to a seminar, you mentioned that that also becomes your experience. Supposing you have won a debate competition, mention that. Supposing you, have, um, you, you are part of a club uh, and work, let's say a clean Kohima campaign, and let's say you are an active member in that, that also becomes your experience and it, re and it reflect your skills. So you need to mention those experiences depending on the question that is required. And in real life, like I said, people want to see your skills more, what skills you have, all right? As an employer, they would be looking to your experiences more. And if required, you can also mention your hobbies. But hobbies are not that necessary here. If you are uh, writing an application, supposing let's say you want to participate in the Hornbill Festival and your hobby is a singer, let's say, then you can mention it. See, according to the question and according to the job requirement, you have to mention these things. But in the exam, maybe it may not be very necessary but again, the exception here is depending on the question. So I hope you find these tips useful and I hope you would practice it. There are so many questions there in your textbook. You need to practice it. You need to learn it. This is, uh, class 12 is the only last year for you to learn how to write, draft, all these kind of things. Nobody, when you go to university, nobody will be teaching you all these things again. So with, uh, you need to practice writing. You get to learn to write only when you practice. So this is something that I can mention here, but the rest of learning should be practiced on your part. So on that note, we will be winding up our class for today. Thank you all very much for joining me.